And oh, George, I wanted to give you a heads up. Emily has a hard stop at 1.30. Do you think you'll be going that oh, late? We, no, we will not. We will be done at 12.30, if not sooner. Um, Terrific. But, yeah. Okay. So, Thank you. Sure. You're all set. Is in the attendees. Oh, I'll yeah. bring her. Thank you. If you could. Sorry, sorry. All right. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of GOL to order. It is um, September 8th, and it is 10.32 AM. Um, Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone and instructions will be provided if needed. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Just gonna take a moment, make sure everybody can be heard. And so I'm gonna start this morning with uh, Pat. Uh, yes. Thank you. And Mandy? Present. And Darcy? Yes. And Sarah? Present. And uh, Shalini is a guest. Shalini, if you just would uh, say hello. I'm sure you're audible, but just to check. Yes, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Um, so uh, I can put the agenda up on the screen if you'd like. We're going to move it around a bit. And there have been some changes since I uh, sent it out to you. Um, we have a little bit of business to do right at the start. We should have done it at the last meeting, but your chair uh, forgot. Um, we were to decide how we want to continue to meet over the next month or two. And um, so while I am trying to find the share screen button, <laughs> I'd like you to begin to think about, um, I'm not sure we have many options, but I want to hear from you all as to whether we want to continue on Zoom, whether we want to meet in person, want to do hybrid. Um, I need to uh, tell Lynn and to tell the council. So that's the first item on, this, on our agenda. And I'm going to put it up on the screen now so you can see it. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, is that large enough? Let me make it a little bigger. No, that's pretty big. Let's try 200%. Okay, there we go. Okay. So discussion and vote on how GOL will meet. Any thoughts from my colleagues? Or is the answer obvious that clearly we're going to be on Zoom or we're going to be on Zoom for the next month at least? So maybe the only question is when do we want to revisit this question? Mandy, please go ahead. Yeah, so the vote that brought this to the committees was through September 30th, which is this meeting and one other meeting, um, uh -huh. and was only for either hybrid or um, remote, I guess, the way the language of the referral or yeah. whatever that was called was. Yeah. So to me, that doesn't really give us a lot of options. Um, yeah. And it's beyond this meeting, one other meeting, essentially. Um, you know, I think given what we've been told about hybrid, it, it hurts me to say, but I don't think that's an option for all of the committees because I think it would overburden our staff. staff and I, right. We need to, you know, prioritize some, in some sense, their well being and their work too. Um, so the fact that there's no in-person only option, I think, um, pretty narrow at least for yeah. one more meeting, yeah. sadly remote. So I'm going to propose a motion. I'm not sure. We, I assume we do have to vote given the nature of the, of the referral or what we we're asked to do by the council. I'm going to propose that we continue to meet via Zoom uh, until September 30. And at that date, if the chair remembers, um, we will uh, revisit the question. Is there a second? Uh, George, would you, would you yeah. entertain a, a friendly amendment to extend George? that? Because you know we're having this delta variant surge right now. Um, it seems kind of like a waste of time to not extend it. <laughs> I can agree with you, Darcy. I guess the only thought is that we're basically responding to something the council sent to us, and um, at the date on the council 
referral or whatever we want to call it was September 30. I'm not, again, pushing it further, but it goes beyond what the council asked us. Any thoughts well, from the rest of you on that? Yeah, Darcy. George, it does seem like we can say, I think we're all in agreement to stay in Zoom until the end of September, but this committee can decide now whether it wants to continue that longer. It doesn't, okay. isn't dependent. And then if there's some major change, okay. Nick, otherwise, yeah, because I agree with Darcy, it's a kind of a waste of time not to deal with it for several months. Okay, does do people want to make it through the end of October? It would be, um, I'm gonna get the date, or I don't, what are thoughts about the date? I, I'm torn because the council specifically voted September 30, and I think we should stay with that, even though I agree that it's a waste of time to do this every two meetings. Um, <laughs> But also, um, I think at some point we need to face the reality that things aren't necessarily going to get tremendously better. There's always going to be new variants. There's always going to be things, and we have to start trusting vaccines and that they will work. Um, and and um, accepting that this is probably a item that is uh, a virus that is going to be with us forever. Um, and we're going to have to find ways to live with that. And so I don't want to indefinitely extend or even extend through October or November immediately and remote only meetings, because I think we can do it safely in person um, with masks and with distancing if need be. I mean, our kids are going, my daughter right now is in school seven hours a day with a mask in a full room with kids that are probably not vaccinated because they might not be old enough and is fine. And I think we as adults need to recognize that if we're putting it on our kids, we could probably do it ourselves too. Um, so I would object to doing anything other than what the council sent to us, which was September, September 30. Okay, other oh, thought, yeah, Darcy. I think we can't, we can't, you can't really accept the friendly amendment until the, the second did anyway. Um, but um, yeah, I, I feel like um, the people that are most at risk are those that are older and have pre-existing conditions. And of course, those that are unvaccinated, but even the ones that are vaccinated. So um, that's what's happening right now with the surge. And so, yeah, kids are not as much at risk but older people are, and our council is full of older people. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't wanna have this argument every month. Um, so I second your um, motion, George. And, uh, and request that friendly amendment to at least go to at the end of October. All right. Um, so we have a motion on the floor. It's to, um, and the October date um, would be, what would it be? Um, uh, we have October 6th, 20th. I think it would be October 20th. Yeah, October 20th would be the date if we went to the end of October. Um, further discussion. All right, seeing none, I'm going to move directly to a vote. Um, again, the motion is to continue to meet via Zoom uh, until October uh, 20. And let me just double check that date quickly. Um, but I believe it's correct. It is correct. Thank you. Um, so to meet until uh, through October 20, and at that meeting, October 20, we'll revisit um, the question. Um, so uh, let's go around the horn. I'm going to start uh, with Pat. I'm just going to go by the Aye. screen. Aye, Pat is yes. Um, Mandy? No. Um, Darcy? Yes. Uh, Sarah? Aye. And the chair is an aye. So we're going to, uh, it'll be four to one in favor. Um, we will continue to meet via Zoom until October 20. And at that point, um, we'll revisit the question. George? Yes, please. Uh, just as I've started to go through my calendar, I, I'm going to be away for the meeting on the 22nd of September. I just want 
everybody to know that now. Okay, okay. So Pat will be absent. I'll make that note. Thank you for telling me. If you look on the screen, uh, we have next uh, two zoning amendments. Um, I'd like to postpone those for a few minutes and come back to them. Um, we do not have the uh, attorney's reviews uh, this morning, unfortunately. And the reasons for that are somewhat complicated. I'm, I'm willing to go into that for a moment or two. Um, we, there are some documents in your folder um, and we could discuss those if we wish. Um, but at the moment, we don't have anything official we can actually look at and vote on. Um, then we have the Puerto Rican proclamation, which I'd also like to postpone for a moment and go directly to India and Pakistan. Since we have a, a guest, we have Councillor Ball Milne here. Um, she is the council sponsor of this. And I can't, can anyone tell? Uh, Shalini, please go ahead. Yeah, and we have a residence sponsor here in, as a, in the audience, Alina Durrani, if we okay. could bring her in. Thank bring you. Bring her into the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment and I'm going to see if I can do this. Um, ah, participants, let's see here, uh, attendees. There's Alina and I'm going to, I can allow her to talk. Oh, sorry, hang on for a second. Promote to panelists. Wow, that is power. Okay. <laughs> Alina, I'm promoting you to a panelist. Let's see what happens. Through the power of technology. Very good. All right. So Alina, welcome. Um, if you would like to unmute, that would be great. And uh, you, you may show yourself if you wish, or, or just the screenshot is whatever you prefer. But um, we're going to, I'm going to put up on the screen now the uh, actual um, proclamation. And um, I'll put this away. And here it is. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger if I can. Uh, zoom. Whoops. All right. Okay. So I hopefully everyone can see that nice clearly. Nicely done, George. So we have a uh, proclamation 2021 India and Pakistan 75th Independence Day proclamation. I hope everyone's had a chance to look at this. Our usual custom, Shalini is, I think, familiar with this, but Alina maybe not. Um, we tend to go through it, um, not necessarily line by line, but um, sometimes we do. Um, but we start with any uh, concerns or questions people have from the committee. Um, our job is simply to declare this clear, consistent, and actionable. Uh, we do not engage in a discussion about the merits of the proclamation or whether we agree with it or disagree with it or blah, 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 blah. blah. But we're simply telling the council when we vote that this document is, is clear, consistent, actionable. So we tend to be just looking at, we do look at the language. If there's any need to change format, that sort of thing is fairly technical, not very exciting, though we've had some good discussions, I think, in the past. So that's where we're headed. And um, I'm going to see hand, Mandy's hand is raised. So I'm going to begin with Mandy. Yeah. I what you just put on the screen was not what was in the packet, I don't believe. No, oh, it isn't. Uh-oh. So, um, I, I, which just means it'll just take us a little longer to go through because I think some of us will be reading it for the first time. Um, I, okay. Uh, I did get the third. Um, this is a, a version three. I, th I guess the first question is for Shalini. Is this the correct version? My understanding is it is. Is that correct? Okay, so I want to apologize and thank you all for entertaining this last minute. Um, and yes, we did make some edits. So basically the first three paragraphs pretty much were added and the rest will, I mean, that's where the bulk of the change is. Oh, let me see. Yeah, that's where the bulk of the change is. And then after this, uh, we got some more feedback from uh, Indian and Pakistani residents that, and those are just minor, that's just switching like, this is a sensitive issue and we want to make sure that we are alternating India and Pakistan going back and forth. So just a little bit of that order, but we'll come to that later. Just want to give you a little time to read the first three paragraphs. Okay. Um, so first thing that I would ask is that make sure the names are spelled correctly. Um, I assume that is correct. So Alina 
and Ambreen and Sanjay, their last names are all correctly spelled? Yes. And do we want to add doctors to the name Alina? I don't, Alina is a PhD student. Uh, do you have um, anything to add at this point? Okay. Um, but I know that Ambreen is a doctor and Sanjay is a PhD. Is it customary to add that to their names? That's a good question. Um, I don't recall that we've done that in the past. Um, we pretty much put down whatever is submitted to us. We don't add things. We don't add titles unless someone uh, sends it to us that way. And um, I don't know if my colleagues have any thoughts on this. I'm, I'm, com I'm comfortable adding titles unless the individual has requested it or unless it's in the original document. Anyone? So I guess my thought is we're going to leave it as is, unless I hear otherwise from my colleagues. I can just speak on behalf of the residents that I think it's good to acknowledge that they're doctors. Because Ambreen is a dentist and Sanjay is a PhD, so. Colleagues, thoughts? I'm okay with it either way. Yeah, that's right, so no a strong feeling. Okay, so we can make that change. So we'd be um, uh, Dr. Ambreen Baba and Dr. Sanjay Naraka. All right. Oh. Give people a moment to read. Um, your hand is up, mm -hmm. Shalini. Do you have further thoughts? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, give people a moment to read the first three paragraphs. Mandy. I'm in the second paragraph. Yep. Mm -hmm. The second line is significant transfer of capital from India to England. Um, mm -hmm. I know when it later on it talks about how it was partitioned into two independent nations, and you talked about the sensitive nature. Is it just India to England, or should we be mm. referring to both? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Alina, do you have any perspective on that? Um, it was India before the partition, so this is okay. Thank you, Alina. So I have uh, no issues with um, any of the three paragraphs in terms of clarity or consistency. Um, anyone else? Um, I have, and I hope everyone else has had a chance to read the remainder of the document. I had no concerns with clarity, consistency um, with the remainder of the document. Um, so Mandy, please. Um, the 1947 partition, whereas, needs a comma. Okay. Um, it's yep. the, I see mm -hmm. it. Thank that you. One. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, uh, Mandy? Um, at, just in the now therefores, which we're not to right now. Okay, so before we go there, any other uh, concerns, questions, problems with the language? I don't see any, okay. Now therefore, be it resolved, okay. Um, again, just quickly back up for a second. We are confident that it is four o'clock on September 24th. That's that's a fixed yes. date. Yes. Okay, thank you. September 24th, that means. Okay, thank you. Mandy, now therefore, comment. We're trying to move from hoisting to raising. Oh, hoisting Five. versus raising. Okay. Okay. That's my only other one. <laughs> <laughs> hoisting is there. Uh, yeah, it's, and, it's the fourth line up from the yeah. bottom. Proclamation by hoisting the Indian and Pakistani national flags. Mm -hmm. So that would okay. be Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, concerns with the now therefore clause? So I yes. have one that 
yeah. relates um, not to the now therefore clause, but to the two we're considering today, which is this one and the Puerto Rico one. Oh, okay. Heritage Sorry. Day, yep. Because although the Puerto Rico one that was in the packet didn't talk about raising the Puerto Rican flag, um, mm -hmm. I went back to the 2019 proclamation and we did. And yep. that started on September 23rd and went to September 29th. Mm. Um, and so um, we're going to need an extra flagpole. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess what I wanted to ask mm. the, the sponsors here is what are the feelings about sharing the flagpoles also with Puerto Rico's flag? Um, or do we need to consider dates differently because of the overlap of those two matters why couldn't we not change the uh, alter the puerto rican dates is that a fixed week that um or is it just traditionally it's been that week but it's not this sounds like this is tied to um events so outside of amherst this the puerto rico one is tied to the pro-independence movement and right. the um Grito de la Reyes ah, rebellion right. on September 23rd. Okay, um, all right. That's actually closer. We our original thing was August 14th and 15th, so um, it makes sense to keep the Puerto Rico. And since we've already organized and invited people, so we can't really shift the day around. But I think we're okay with sharing the flags. I mean, it shows the diversity of art, and that's kind of the idea: is to show we welcome and embrace all cultures and people so so the thought would be that we would have um the flags on the flagpole um sharing at least for a certain period of time they'd be on the same and Three. that'd be fine yeah okay all right uh, i had checked with alan the uh, and, and he had Snow. checked with yeah and he had checked with uh, i believe guilford is the one from dpw who gave mm -hmm. Um, this idea that we would have two equal flag, uh, additional flagpoles because we have one okay. where we have the current, but then we were like, you know, where, how do we put the two flags? And so he said, you can have two identical flagpoles. So we do have then three poles. Okay. All right. And so they're already hard. in the ground, et cetera, or, or I'm, I'm no, little... just one of them is, and that's why we needed the whole proclamation and town council thing to um, allow for two more poles to be temporarily put in. Okay, so they would temporarily put up a pole. And That's so, my understanding, yeah. And the flags then Thank would you, not Shalini. be, they wouldn't mm -hmm. be sharing a pole, they would have their own separate pole. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 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 Well, so I think, well, so except the Puerto Rican flag would be up on one. Mm -hmm. So are you, you're adding two more temporary ones? Poles, yeah. Okay. I think Thank George you. needs to communicate to Paul yeah. This, this huh. crowded flag issue. So okay. that All right. Guilford and DPW and Alan Snow can prepare for it. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like Shawnee's had conversations with Alan and he's had conversations with Guilford. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But all of but, uh, this needs to be coordinated together in line. Yeah. In view that we have a third flag here. Okay. All right. I will reach out to Paul on this. Right. And uh, uh, there were a few more just very subtle switches of between India and Pakistan order. Do you want me to yes, if you are, well, send it, you? just send it to you or just say it, uh, no, let's do it, it now. Out now? OK, yeah. yes, of course. So the first uh, line would be uh, where the first whereas is India and Pakistan. No, huh? it's Pakistan and India. Well, yeah. She's changing it. Yeah, oh. it's just we're gonna yeah we're gonna switch it uh, down a little bit, um, and it was pointed out that Pakistan celebrates the day one day before. So later on, we switch it to Pakistan being. So I'll tell you. So starting here, it's the first one is switching it to India and Pakistan, yep. and then going down to number one, two, three. It's the fifth one where it says, where is at midnight between oh. August 14 and 15. So over there, it will be Pakistan and India. Okay. And then after that, one, two, three, where it says Indian and Pakistani, we're switching it to Pakistani and Indian Americans, leading with Pakistani there. And 
and okay. then yep. and then um here the the last okay. now therefore yep. uh it would be proclamation by raising the pakistani and indian flag national flags i think we could go in that order since we're saying that pakistan had um celebrates one day before so we can even raise the flags in that order okay good any other changes everything else is okay the order is fine i think so yeah okay all right and again i really thank you all for including this in your agenda i know you all have long agendas and and our hope is really that this um kind of also invites the Indian and Pakistani residents who might be a little disconnected from town politics. So I've invited the community participation officers to have a table there with all the committees. And, and even in our just this organizing this, I've made new friends along the way. And uh, it's really been a wonderful process. So thank you all for supporting it. Thank you, for all yeah. of you, for bringing yeah. this forward. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. All right. So, right. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I move to declare the 2021 India and Pakistan 75th Independence Day Proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable. Second. Today. All right. So its motion has been made and seconded by uh, Pat. Um, I don't see any further discussion. I'm going to go immediately to vote. This time we're going to start um, with uh, Sarah. Aye. And Pat. Aye. And Darcy. Yes. And uh, Mandy. Aye. And the chair is an aye. So the vote is 5-0. Um, and so um, I, and I will be in contact with Paul about the flags. And um, so thank you again, Shalini. Thank you, Alina, for being present uh, and assisting us in this. And I look forward to being present on the 24th. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and it's at, you said 4 o'clock. Let me get this yes, into my... Is. 4 and, to 5. And it sounds like you will be having more than just a flag raising. There'll be an opportunity for people to mix and mingle, and there will be seat, mm -hmm. uh, com community participation officers present as well. Yes, and masks That's, on. All right. Well, someday in a year, mm -hmm. we'll have a, uh, I hope, a public space where we mm -hmm. can gather in front of town hall. Yes. But, uh, so that's anyway, but this is great. Thank you both very much. And uh, thank you all. We're going to move you. on to Puerto Rico. All right. All right. And I'm going to put this into my phone, if people will bear with me, September 24th. Uh, that's a Friday. Interesting. Okay. And four o'clock. Okay. So. Okay. All right, good. Let's stop sharing. I'm going to put Puerto Rico. Um, declaration or proclamation up on the screen. I'm gonna put this, um, actually, I'm gonna put this over here for the moment. Um, and uh, let's get your screen up here. And this is Puerto Rico. And let's get Puerto Rico up here. Um, and let's get it a bit bigger. Okay, so this is sponsored by Lynn. Um, I have, was not aware of any other council sponsors. I'm not aware of a community sponsor. Um, so at the moment, it simply has the council sponsor. And uh, I made a few very small changes uh, prior to the meeting. Um, one was just a, a, literally a spacing element. Um, and of course, introducing the council sponsor and I've got a suggestion for the end, which we'll come to. But first, um, open it up to my committee members in terms of other changes, problems, concerns with this document. Um, in the whereas that talks about the defense of the United States and all of the wars, okay. um, the Oxford comma after Iraq, That's I believe. Positive. Okay, it's a that lot one. of war. Yeah. 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 Uh, yep, got it. I did and, have, yeah, go ahead, Mandy, please. And in the second to last, whereas the positive yep. contributions to town, to the town and local community in 2019, we capitalized town. 
the T in town. That is correct. Thank you. All right. And then I had changes to the where now therefore clause. Okay, let's hold on that for just a yep. second. I had a question again, we, we, you know, we have time today. I thought we weren't gonna have any time today, but we do have time today as we'll learn in a moment. But um, the order of this, um, the, the order of the whereas clauses, um, uh, yeah. I'm not sure it matters. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think it's fine. Getting into micro analyzing this, it's not good. Other thoughts, it sounds like everyone's okay with the whereas clauses. I don't see any other hands. Okay, so let's look at now therefore. We, the Amherst Town Council, officially proclaimed September 23 as Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican Heritage Day. That should be a period, right? Andy. Yeah, so um, I, I went back to the 2019 yeah. um, proclamation, which this one must be a slightly earlier than that, um, but yeah. that one, puts September 23, comma, 2021. Okay. We, we put the year in, I guess, because we do it every year. So. That is correct, we do. Um, and then after Heritage Day, I, I don't think it capitalized or fully capitalized Puerto Rican. I think it just initial capped those, the, the name. Okay. Right. Um, cool. But after Heritage Day, it was a comma, and then, yes. And then pretty much what we just saw oh, in the, the, the flag, in the flag one, raising. and yeah. further recognizing this proclamation by raising the Puerto Rican flag. From September 23 to September 29, 2021. to help cultivate awareness yep. for all residents of Amherst. Oh, I spell September right. <laughs> yep. There's a, yeah, get rid of the, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, so now therefore we, the Amherst Town Council officially proclaims the turn 23, 2021 as Puerto Rican Heritage Day and further recognizing this proclamation, further recognize, recognizing this proclamation it, it by- was that's, recognizing. That's fine. By raising the Puerto Rican flag from September 23 to September 29, 2021 to help cultivate awareness for all residents of Amherst. Okay, and then my contribution was to get rid of this hereunto voted set our hands language um, and simply replace it with voted this whatever day of September, 2021. Okay, any other thoughts, questions, comments? Then I'm gonna make the motion to uh, declare the Puerto Rican Heritage Day Proclamation. Do I put the date in this or not actually? Um, what's any thought on that? What, George? Do we want to put the 2021? Do we want to give it the year um, so that each year it has a different date or do you just want to keep it sure. as it is? So it would be uh, as we did with, uh, so I would be declaring the 2021 Puerto Rican Heritage Day Proclamation to be clear, consistent, and actionable. Second, D'Angelo. Okay, Go ahead, Mandy. second. Okay. Pat can have it. I know. So we have a motion been made and seconded and any further discussion? I don't see any. So I'm going to move to a vote. I'm going to start with Darcy. Yes. And with Mandy. Aye. And Sarah. Aye. And Pat. Aye. And the chair is also an aye. Again, it's 5-0 to declare the 2021 Puerto Rican Heritage Day Proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to put that out of there. All right, um, let's go back to the, uh, let me find the agenda. Okay, let's put that up on the screen for a moment. Yep, 
gives us something to look at while I blather on here. Um, we had originally planned to have two zoning amendments brought to us uh, from KP Law. And um, through various series of uh, delays and snafus, uh, at the moment, we have neither in any formal uh, uh, shape that we can actually um, uh, vote on in terms of uh, the KP Law comments. Um, the, uh, the ADU. Um, I thought his comments were there. There were, Pat, but unfortunately, I did not make clear to him, and he did not understand that the document he was given was not just those. He thought that what uh, he was given was just three tiny little changes to a pre-existing oh, okay. bylaw. I thought he knew. I didn't even think of it at the time, but it was stupid. He needed to be informed that this entire document was a rescind and replace, and he needed to look at the whole thing. And once he learned that, obviously, that slowed everything down. Um, it's unfortunate they do tend to wait to the last minute to do this, even though they've had it for like two weeks. Um, they tend to wait until the day or two before. Um, but nonetheless, that was my mistake. And that's unfortunate. Um, mixed use, he is in communication with um, Chris and with the planning department. He had some specific concerns he wanted to raise with them. And he, in his communication to Paul last night um, and in Paul's communication to me this morning over the phone, um, he seems to think that he'll have that um, sometime later today, but that doesn't do us any good. Um, so we will not see these unless we um, you know, see down below, I have an item for discussion of future agenda items, but we will not see these until September 22, even though I'm sure they will be finished well before then. Um, but September 22 still works given the calendar that Mandy has put together, um, given the uh, 90 day deadline that we're all under um, in terms of voting on zoning bylaws. So we could still make this work on September 22nd. And that's what I told Paul, but I also told him I would obviously raise it with my colleagues. Um, we do have the option of calling an extra meeting. Um, I'm not sure that makes sense in this case, but um, that's an option. And we do have some material in the packet that we could talk about if people have thoughts about it, um, but we cannot really vote on it because we don't have his official statement. So first things first, um, are people okay? And I'm particularly thinking of you, Mandy, because you've been keeping track of the schedule. Um, according to what you've given us and what I've, I've seen, the se September 22nd would still work in terms of the timeline. It does. Um, okay. And so, uh, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm obviously disappointed in the delay, but it's not, um, you know, KP law is what it is um, in terms of when they get us things. So, um, but the September 22nd would work just for, uh, for the rest of the committee. It's likely that it would not be just these two on September 22nd. It would also be potentially apartments and um, parking too. Right. All right. So we could possibly have four. In fact, we would be expecting four by September 22nd. Um, and I think we can handle that, but that's, um, and we do have the option. I mean, certainly we are free to um, add a meeting. And I normally we do not do that. We've already considered that, and we'll talk about it later this, this morning in terms of the bylaws for future consideration. Um, when we're dealing with uh, zoning bylaws that are under a 90 day clock, um, I think we do have to consider that at some point, no matter what the zoning bylaw may happen to be, um, if it's running up against that clock um, and GOL is the last step in the process, there may be occasions, it doesn't seem like this is one, but there may be occasions where the chair may ask you to consider an extra meeting um, simply to deal with that. I don't think it's necessary here, and I hope it won't be necessary at any time, but that's a possibility. Anyone have any thoughts on any of the documents that are currently in the folder related to either ADUs or mixed use, um, or do you want to wait until the 22nd? All right. Um, so the next item on the agenda is review of the proposed uh, change to the rules of procedure 5.2 public hearings. 
So um, I'm going to, unless I hear otherwise, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I'm going to put the agenda away and I'm going to open up that document. And I'm going to share it with you. And I think actually that view is pretty good. I think that's pretty large. Okay. So this came to us um, as a referral um, to deal with the question of public hearings and the fact that we don't have an explicit statement, our rules of procedure that would allow um, various council committees to hold public hearings. Um, we have done this, TSO has done this. And, um, and so um, and community resources has also done it. And so I think the thought was that we should just um, add something to 5.2, which is the public hearings entry in the rules of procedure that just makes it clear that these, this authority is granted um, by the council to various council committees to, to do so. And so I've uh, had an initial version, Mandy also had a look at it. And so we're actually looking at Mandy's um, version. Um, and uh, so I'm going to read it and uh, then open it up to discussion. Um, this is not changing any existing language, just adding language to 5.2, which is just um, to the initial paragraph. While some public hearings may be required by MGL, the town charter, or by council rules of procedure, the council may choose to hold a public hearing on any topic it chooses. The council may also designate a council. Now here I use subcommittee. I'm wondering if that, we don't usually use that language, though I think Evan is very fond of it. Um, I'm wondering if it just be, the council may also designate a council committee to hold public hearings on its behalf. Any thoughts about subcommittee versus committee? We don't use subcommittee, at least I don't. I'm not familiar that we use it. I don't remember that we use it much. So I'm suggesting that we just have committee. Any thoughts? That works for me. At the present time, the Community Resources Committee, CRC, has been designated by the council to conduct public hearings on zoning adoptions or changes as required by MGL 40A and section five. And there's a footnote. And the Town Services and Outreach Committee, TSO, has been designated by the council to conduct public hearings on any permanent changes to the public ways per general bylaw 3.14 and Town Council policy regarding the public ways to C. And that has a footnote. And the footnotes are below, simply stating that per the first one per Mass General Law 48, Section 5, the Town Council voted on October 7th, it simply gives the date when this happened, September 7th, 2019, to designate CRC to hold public hearings as required under MGL 48, Section 5. And on August 2nd, 2021, Town Council voted to designate TSO to hold public hearings required under General Bylaw 3.14 and town council policy regarding the public ways to see. Thoughts on this language, thoughts on this addition? George? Please go ahead, man. I'm oh, sorry, Darcy. Um, as I said at the town council meeting, mm -hmm. I, I don't see why this is necessary. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know, I don't see why we're spending our time on it. Uh, we already voted to allow those things. So why are we adding it to our rules? Um, it just seems, and several people voted against referring this to this committee. Right. Um, and so I continue to wonder why mm -hmm. we need to tinker with our rules all the time. Um, it, it just doesn't mm -hmm. seem necessary. Okay. Well, 
Other and thoughts? we definitely don't want to, you know, you wouldn't put in the rules at the present time. That does not belong in rules. Right. I, I um, think that, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, that whole section of mm -hmm. what's happening at the present time, that, mm -hmm. that sentence. Right. That, that, I mean, I don't have that much objection to the first couple of sentences, but after at the present time, that doesn't make sense to mm -hmm. have that in our rules. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mandy. I basically agree with Darcy. Um, I, we have rules, we have votes that relate to the rules and to continually add those votes that might affect a rule or you yep. know, to keep going back is, is an exercise in craziness to make everyone crazy almost. Um, uh, <laughs> you yeah. know, if, if people deem it necessary, I think the whole starting at the, at the present time could be deleted, but keep maybe the footnotes if people really want to see what ones have been voted and just put them at the end of the hold public hearings on its behalf, keep the footnotes or even just consolidate the footnotes into one footnote that says, here are the votes that have happened. But again, if we put that in the rules and a vote changes, we have to change the rules um right right and all right i hear you good you know and so um i would be okay with adding the first i guess it's two sentences up to hold public hearings on its behalf i'd delete the, rest, delete the frankly. rest okay um mm -hmm. i i would be okay with not even doing those two sentences um so you share with darcy the thought that this is there's really not needed so who who did bring this forward? I thought you did, Mandy Jo. It came from Lynn. I think um, it came from Lynn. Yeah, Lynn felt that um, since we were having various uh, council committees conducting public hearings, there was some, and I think she's right actually in this, there was some confusion or lack of clarity about uh, their right to do so. Um, now, maybe that isn't the case, and if one reads through all the fine print, one will see that it's perfect. I mean, it is. So I think her thought was simply to have it in the, these two sentences uh, up to uh, the various details that have been uh, mentioned here. But the, the first two sentences, I think are helpful um, in simply clarifying that the council may designate a council committee to hold public hearings on its day. I think that is a valuable uh, statement uh, to, uh, for clarity. The rest of it, I think Darcy's right. I think Mandy's right. Once you get into at the present time and votes that are held on such and such a date, um, you are getting into territory that really is not appropriate for rules. Well, um, you're getting Pat, in. Yeah, Pat, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with Mandy and uh, Darcy. The the first two sentences feel fine. The first mm -hmm. the. Um, at present time, we're just giving a description of some examples of committees who have done exactly. this. And I don't right. see that is appropriate right. for a rule. So what I'm hearing, and Sarah, please speak up um, if you wish. But you uh, cut I'm too much, George. You oh. cut too. Yeah, okay. the council may also designate a council committee right. is important. So for the moment, I'm just <laughs> going to put a strike through it, and um, the only other question is whether, again. Um, this is just for our sake, just so we know when these things were done. But again, does it belong in the rules, these footnotes? I'm not really if, sure they do. If Lynn really wants a notation somewhere, don't put it in the rules, put it on the council pages, the web page. Okay, all right. And on the two committee pages or something, just notate them there. Right. So it should be notated um, on the council page and the committee page, but it really doesn't belong in the rules. Yeah, okay. So um, what I'm hearing is that um, the committee is, or at least the majority is happy or willing to accept the first two sentences as an addition, but would remove um, all of this. So I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna try to delete it. Okay. I might do that. All right, I'll, I'll sort this out someday. Okay. All right, I'll fix that when I have a moment. So um, the time allocated to public hearings, that stays. Um, 
that that the time allocated is an A in the rules. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When when you got rid of the T and an extra yeah. deletion, you got rid of the it, it was A to A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. All right. I think if you just undo what you just did a couple, yeah, go, yeah, go through yeah. a couple undos and then redo the delete, you'll be fine, I think. Just... Okay. Yeah, I think you just have to be careful on what you actually delete. Oh. This is what I want to delete. But don't don't go just to the period instead of at the very end instead of the extra space after. Start from the end and yeah. yeah, like that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right, and that should remove the footnotes. Yes. So that's it. All right. So we have before us a, uh, a small change to Rule Procedure Five Point Two Public Hearings. And so I'm willing to make a motion to, um, how does the motion, how do we want to word the motion? That um, we recommend to the town council that they adopt this change to 5.2, rules of procedure 5.2 public hearings as presented uh, by GOL on this date. Is that language sufficient? We're basically yep, I'll recommend, second. we're recommending to the council that they adopt this uh, this change to the rules of procedure um, and it's been made and seconded by Mandy. Any further discussion? Sorry about that. I need to get my phone off. Any further discussion? Um, I'm seeing none. I'm going to uh, put my phone on airplane mode and I'm going to go to a vote. Um, and we start this time with the chair and the chair votes aye. Um, Mandy. Aye. Pat. Aye. Darcy. I think I'm going to abstain because I okay. just feel like it's so unnecessary. Okay. And Sarah? Aye. So the vote is four in favor, a none against, and one abstention. Um, all right. I'm going to put that into the hopper. All right, we um, have review and adopt work plan for council referral of bylaws for future consideration. I'm going to put a document up on the screen um, and we're gonna look at it for a few minutes. I don't think we're gonna spend a lot of time on it, but I'd like to get your input and suggestions about it. And, we do, and so let me do that. Let me just open that first. And again, let me share the screen. There we go. And this may look familiar to some of you. We haven't looked at it in quite a while, but here it is. And um, I believe it's Mandy who went through here and made these further annotations based on the last time we actually talked about this in any substance, which, believe it or not, seems to have been in March. That's a terrifying thought, but that's, um, and so um, I'm wondering if at this stage of the game, I'm simply gonna have to create a report that simply acknowledges that we're at a certain point and that's as far as we can get. For instance, start with the very first one. Um, we, uh, you know, uh, I've simply not gotten anywhere with um, the human, Resources director, we just had them replaced. So, um, Mandy? Um, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, in some sense, I agree. Um, we took some action on some bylaws, we haven't on others. Um, we're coming up to the end of a term. I think maybe we address each bylaw with some sort of vote in this committee on a recommendation as to whether to the council should continue to have the referral, have these bylaws referred. Right now they would continue on to the next committee and council unless the council votes not to continue the referral. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. I think it would be helpful to the next council if we decide 
or recommend to the to this council whether say 2.4 should continue to sit in GOL until something's done or whether we just say it's just not important enough right now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, given that it doesn't appear the staff has put an importance on it type things. And so maybe we just go through and vote each one of these, whether we want it to continue on to a new council or not. If we haven't done anything, there are some that we've gotten answers for, and then we can make recommendations. Right, exactly, for. right. And, but the ones like this one, for instance, I mean, one option also is for me to arrange to meet with Paul between in the next two weeks or so, or at, at some time in, in the near future, and go through items, particular items like this, and get a sense from him whether he thinks it's realistic, given the current state of staff, um, to deal with it. Um, uh, get one more, because I just have not had any uh, feedback from him in a long time from any of these. And so I could arrange to go in and see him and take him through very specific items like this one, not the ones where we can make recommendations, but ones where we're stuck and get a direct answer from him as to whether he, he thinks they can be pursued in the next month or two at the most. And if he thinks not, then we'll come back and, and decide what we wanna do with them. The other option is for some of these to actually recommend the council instead of referring it to GOL, yeah. refer it to the manager or a specific committee. I know there's a bunch of like ComCom, ConCom and AgCom stuff on there. Like maybe if mm -hmm. we actually as a council specifically referred that to them to look at instead of trying to go through back channels. That's a good we, idea. Right. We did that. So that could be part of this. It, I, I, I pity you for the memo you'll have to write, George, but if we take a vote on each one of these specifically right. to refer to a committee to Paul or just sort of give up or do something, keep it in GOL we'd have action on them all, and then we'd know what we're doing. So we have some time today, if we wish, to do go through these, at least start going through them. And for instance, this very first one would be something to the effect that the chair will reach out to the uh, town manager and find out whether this is gonna be, act there's any possibility of it being actionable um, in the next month or so. The next one uh, may be simply that we could vote that this is, you know, we've done everything we need to do. Um, there's no problem with bylaw 3.6 legally. And I'm not sure what this means. And he, I assume Ryan, has questions about the language because of its vagueness. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I had it. Maybe it's a John Hold it Hornet. for the minutes, George. <laughs> I know. I know. Exactly. I'm not sure who the he is because uh, I don't remember having any problems with it. This one might be one where it simply goes in the report that um, this has been vetted and uh, it's fine. Uh, we have no changes. Um, declaration of trust. We, all that. Those questions were addressed, and so this this one can just be um, was taken care of. So can I make a motion on that one? So as we this, go through these. Okay. So we can, go ahead, Mandy, please. I move to recommend the council take no action on bylaw three point six. General bylaw three point six. Okay. Hang on for a moment. To recommend the town council take no action. I think that's how we worded some of the other ones later mm -hmm. on that we'll get to. to. To recommend the council take no action. Right, motion that motion to recommend. General bylaw three point six. Yeah, I'm just going to use. I'm going to be sure. Yeah, uh, three point six. This does not mean we're going to vote yay or nay. I just want to get it down. That's all I'm doing. I just want it written. I can take it out if we need to, but I just have the writing. So on this date, a motion has been made to recommend the council take no action on general bylaw 3.6. In my report, I would um, say that we dealt with it and we feel it's fine the way it is. Any further thoughts? All right, a motion has been made. Is there a second? Do we, do we know enough? I mean, I don't know enough about this to vote on it. Um, well, I think, yeah, we have the problem also that some of this has been been worked on a long time ago, and now we've had a, a hiatus, and we've also had a change in committee membership. Um, yeah. I think you're going to have to trust us here, um, trust the previous members of the committee, um, and trust the work that was done that's been described here in the, in the red. 
um, various conversations that were had, various emails back and forth with uh, Nate Malloy, with John Horneck. Um, and um, the only other option is for you to uh, examine this uh, bylaw on your own and uh, come up with some concerns you have. Um, but uh, I don't think any of us want to continue with this unless someone has a specific concern or issue. Um, and so we were brought this by the bylaw review committee. Um, they presented us with a series of things we needed to do. We have done them um, and in some cases, in this case, we have done them. And uh, the, I think there's a sense that, that, that we're finished with it. But did we, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Did we reinstate the original language of the bylaw after a comparison with the old bylaw? No, we did not. Um, I think the understanding was that um, that was not necessary, that there was no problem with the language. Um, I guess I would just, if we voted on it now, I'd have to abstain because I just don't know enough about it. Okay. Um, okay. 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 But maybe other people do if they've been on the committee and they understand. Well, it. I'm the one. I'm the one who had to deal with this. So really, Darcy, it's a question for me, and it's a fair question. I agree with you. Um, it's just been a long time now, um, and we do have the minutes from March 17th. It says he has questions about the language because of its vagueness, and I just have no recollection of who he is. Whether that was John Hornick, whether that was me, whether that was Nate Malloy. Um, Given the red above, it's probably you and John yeah. have questions. What do some of those bullet points even mean or what, why were they referred and all? So yeah. it's just been so And my long. conversation with John was that, that he really had no desire to go there, didn't have any issues with it. Right. Um, and I wasn't going to get anywhere with John because his mind is on other things. Um, Nate was simply looking at it from a legal perspective and said everything was fine. Um, the original comment is, as Darcy pointed out, came from the bylaw review committee itself. And this is all we got, which is they suggested reinstating the original language of the bylaw and say, and they suggested you need to do a comparison with the old bylaw. And that's all we got. And I have no recollection now right. of what was going on when I was on bylaw review. I wish I did, but it's right, too long right, ago right, for me. Right. And so the other thing is that all of these were functioning bylaws. Right. Uh, and this one in particular, um, I, I don't think there's a problem with it, but that's not a good reason. But, yeah. you know, it's not like uh, it, there's some legal hole in it, or I don't think, but again, it's an opinion. Right. And, and you can see from the very top, it says this could quickly be accomplished through an order to the town manager. So another option is to... Well, yeah, okay. go ahead. I'm sorry, George. I apologize for interrupting. But I'm just looking. The committee recommends a future review of this bylaw. In, once identified, the trust document should be linked to the bylaw. That seems like something that we can remit that can be done if it hasn't been done. That could be checked and quickly done and that should be part of the recommendation. That's really clear. Um, so in the report, um, we would recommend that. And yeah. in the report, we could uh, suggest, um, I think, right, we could, in other words, our way of getting this off our plate is simply to um, recommend the council take no, well, actually we're not, at this point we wouldn't be recommending because in the report we'd be suggesting that, um, except it's not the council we're telling to do this, um, who are we actually instructing to, uh, it's really the town manager. We're saying to the town manager that, that these are his bodies, he's in charge of them, that this is what should be done. So we could recommend the council take no action, but in the report um, it would include um, some of this language that came from the original bylaw review committee. The other option is for the chair who has volunteered to take this on to go once again into the, into the breach and, and track down John Hornick. And in the midst of all the other things that he and I are doing, try to figure out how we're going to do this. And I think all in all honesty, that's just not going to happen. 
Um, I don't think it is critical. I really don't. Um, so this could, we could move on the motion that Mandy has presented. People can vote as they feel, but if it does pass, then in the report, um, this language could be for each, I would, and, the, and it would be for the town manager um, to take under consideration. And I certainly can follow up on that as a chair at some point. So okay. that's, yeah. So we have a motion before us. I what has it been seconded? Has anyone said, I don't think it's been seconded. So, Second. Okay, we have a motion that's been seconded. Um, and, the, and so for the discussion, my thought is that if this were to pass, um, that the language that is here would go into, the, some of the language would go into the report and it would be addressed to the town manager uh, to take these steps. Okay. Right. To take the steps on the left, in the left-hand column? Yeah, I think, um, right. I mean, that's- Well, not all of it because it has been determined that it's been legally established and everything. No, it would be um, the idea of linking this would be a step that we would certainly recommend the town manager take that we would not take, but he would take. But again, Darcy raises a good question. Um, this came to us to look at the original language of the bylaw and compare it with the old bylaw. And um, I know I haven't done that. And I asked John Hornick to help me with it and he didn't do it. So. That's not something I'm sure we can ask the town manager to do. Well, that's that's an a, a interesting thing for the bylaw review committee to be recommending, right? Like, yeah. why would the bylaw review committee suggest reinstating right. the original language if they were recommending something different. I, I just don't understand that and, unless yeah, there's uh, some other body that was recommending that, you know, yeah, or, or yeah. someone in the council or, you know, yeah, somewhere yeah. along the line. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't get that. And then look at the bullet point just above it. Yeah, other recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I, had no, I had no idea what to do with that. Um, so I have a feeling that, um, we're just going to um, let that go. And um, because it, it, we just don't have the bandwidth for it. Um, and if somebody on the housing trust has a concern or somebody from you know, the, uh, uh, another counselor has a concern, but um, this is all we got. I did my due diligence. And I guess what I'm telling you is that at this point, um, all we can do is recommend the linkage and um, in the report and, uh, and then say that the, the, the committee recommends the council take no action. That's what I think we're at at this point. Which may not be satisfactory, but that's, I think at this point, given all that has transpired, that's the best we can do. Is there some way that we can also refer it to the affordable housing trust to, you know, just for their for their um, mm -hmm. information, just in case they want to act on it in some way? I think that one option, Darcy, is for me. Before one option would be for me, I can do this. I can reach out to John John Hornick one more time. He does get back to me. We can have a conversation. I can tell him we are finally moving on this. And um, does he wish, uh, does he think that the housing trust <clears throat> would like to be involved in this or does he just want it to go away? Um, and I then could report back to you at our next meeting. And depending on his answer, um, we could then have the motion and voted on. Um, so that's what I could do. I could simply um, say that at this point we have a motion, it's still <clears throat> on the floor, but chair, We'll reach out to Hornick one last time. And I'm gonna put brackets around this because I think at the moment we can't really vote on it, but I can hold it here just to remind us that we were at the point of doing that, but reasonable questions have been raised about this column. I can bring them to John one last time and see if in the report I could have language to the effect that we would like the housing uh, trust to look at the language. 
Do we have the do we have the um, proposed bylaw that came from the bylaw review committee that is like a a non clean copy that shows all the comments on all the different bylaws? Just I can try and find it. I have a whole file full of stuff that uh, it might be buried in there somewhere. Um, I think at this point the thought, Darcy, is that it's really up to uh, the housing trust to decide if they have concerns about the language of this document and the old language. And if they do, um, do they want to look at it? And uh, we would be simply recommending to them that they do so. And my question to John would be, is it even worth making that recommendation if they're not going to do it? Mandy? Yeah, I was just going to say um, we could change the motion from recommend the council take no action to recommend the council refer to the housing trust for possible action or for, for further action. For follow up for right. follow up. Yeah. And again, with that motion as well, what I would suggest before we vote on it today, it's just a suggestion, is that I reach out to John and talk to him a little bit about this and see. Um, what his thoughts are, because it, it seems pointless to recommend something to a body if they're really um, not at all interested in doing it and don't have a concern about it. My impression talking to John, which has now been many months, was that he really had, as long as the legal thing was settled, he had no concerns. Um, but I need to confirm that. And um, so I, what I'm going to suggest is I confirm that, report back to you one last time. And at that point, we could have a motion either to refer to his committee if he's willing to take it or simply to tell the council to take no action. Should we withdraw the motion now then? I'm gonna leave it in brackets just to, uh, for my sake, just for notes. Okay. But yes, I think the motion, it sounds like the motion uh, is, we're going to withdraw the motion. You accept, is that acceptable to you? Yes. Okay, um, so we're gonna withdraw the motion for the moment and I will reach out to Hornick on this one. Um, the next item. Uh, so, yeah, this is another example where I think I just have to go to town to Paul and say, you know, um, given bandwidth and given realities, is this something you think realistically can be managed um, in the next month or two? And um, if not, then I think we would simply recommend that to the council that they take no action. But I have to reach out to Paul. Now there's a reference here to Darcy. I don't know if Darcy has any thoughts on that, but. Um... Oh. All right, so this is. Um... Okay, um, I think we have a motion. So this has been taken, right? So that can go in there, that's been done, right? Yeah, so that goes in the report. Um, next one, littering and illegal dumping. Uh, Mandy said bylaw 3.16 is still not ready for any decision. She said there is a question of places that should be added to the illegal dumping and littering violation under this bylaw. This this is yeah. one that Dave Zomek said um, that needed to go to CONCOM and AGCOM to see whether they wanted to add stuff in. There's a whole memo on it. Um, okay. So I would recommend at this point that we formally refer the bylaw to CONCOM and AGCOM. AGCOM. It makes sense. Con, CONCOM at least. Um, so we're re recommending that the council refer? Yes. yes. Motion to recommend. The council refer 3.16 to Conservation Commission and Agricultural Commission for review. Did it also go, oh, I guess I'm just thinking DPW is the entity that has to actually pick it up, right? We could add the town manager in too, because we can't. We can only say to him for staff departments. That's true. So this is basically a motion to recommend the council refer three point sixteen to to the TM. 
um, in the hope that, or with the suggestion that, or in the hope something to that language. So recommend to refer to the town manager um, to what? To I think it's just the town manager, ConCom, and AgCom for further review on um, places that should be added. Okay, motion's been made. Is there a second? Second, Swartz. Thank you, Sarah. So on this date, um, a motion has been made and seconded to refer, to recommend to the council a referral. Um, I'm gonna go immediately to a vote. Um, Sarah. Aye. And Darcy. Yes. Pat. Aye. Mandy. Aye. And the chair is an aye, so the vote is 5 0 um, on 5 uh, 9 8 to refer. Okay, thank you. Nuisance. Um, so, as you can see, the purple text is the most recent. Haneke said that she asked that bylaw 3.26 be referred to the town attorney. The town attorney responded. Um, Next step, we'll be bringing this to TSO. Oh, oh my God, that's my okay. Darcy, we got to do something about this, Darcy. Let's put a stop to this. She said the next step should be bringing this to TSO, but they could also deal with it as a committee. I'm sorry, who's they? Um, uh, they was GOL. Oh, okay. All right. Well, D'Angela said she would like to add this to the next agenda. <laughs> <laughs> And that was in March. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Um, all right, thoughts on this one? So this one, the memo, which is not in this packet, actually has potential language from the town attorney to add. And the question is, who should do that, GOL or TSO? OK, and this has to do with a nuisance house. It seems like a nice GOL, I'm sorry, TSO task. Why don't we give it to TSO? Yeah, but then if it goes to TSO, do we have to have it back in GOL? I do, just to make sure the language is clear, consistent, and actionable. <laughs> then why don't we just do it ourselves? Well, just... we, might, we might like their thoughts. We might like their thoughts in terms of, you know, town service, maybe not. I mean, this is basically about, um, uh, so basically it's what happened here? I'm sorry. It's all definitional on what the definitions of things are. Right. So one option is for us to take this up at a, at a, a next meeting, ideally or soon, where we look at the memo and we look at the language and we, we make a decision on it. And then that becomes part of the report because we'd be, we'd be recommending to the council that they adopt that they adopt this change to the uh, to the bylaw. And maybe it makes sense to keep it with us. So what we need then is, and Mandy can help me with this, is just the, uh, I need a copy of the memo uh, from the lawyer and a copy of the bylaw. And so this, this would be, um, uh, this should be taken up by GOL ASAP, need memo and bylaw and packet, something to that effect. Is that fair enough? So we're not going to vote. We're not going to vote on this. Um, this is something we're going to choose to deal with, and I need to get this stuff together and put it in a meeting packet, ASAP. Okay. All right. Okay. This is a bylaw 3.31, which deals with wetlands protection. Um, this, I think, probably is again with Zomek. Um, not heard that no response so this we might simply uh, vote to make a motion to refer this to the town manager and to the con the concom yep okay so nine eight motion to refer uh, excuse me motion to recommend that the town council refer to TM and to CONCOM. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion. Um, this does seem like at this point, 
Um, this has to uh, be dealt with by them and they have to decide what they want to do. Okay, um, I'm going to go to a vote unless there's further discussion. Start with the chair. The chair is an aye. Pat? Aye. Darcy? Yes. Sarah? Aye. Mandy? Aye. Okay. Unanimous to refer to town council. Okay. I think this is probably going to be the same thing. Committee, okay. Andy will talk to Zomac, put more pressure on Zomac, send two emails. And then, I'm sorry, the, there's no, apparently no mini, meeting minute notes. Notes. Anyway, there's nothing here. So, um, Sarah, do you have anything about this bylaw that's important to the right to farm one is what we're on now, yes? Yeah, right to farm is, uh, right to farm is actually a very important bylaw as far as right. local farmers go. It's very, very important to us. Yeah. Um, it started to go through when I was on AgCom and then when my husband was vice chair is when they finished it. And um, Jamie Wagner was actually also uh, really pivotal in this. So this is incredibly important. And it's something that the AgCom worked on. Um, I would say, I guess I would almost wonder about asking some of the, the uh, AgCom members who originally were on it, maybe for some input um as well wouldn't have to be long um mm. but i my my part of my feeling is that agcom is the one that that dealt with it it's really really important um so local it farmers can lose a lot of their rights and i don't know if i necessarily want it just to i as a farmer would want it just to go back to concom and that's it so would you be interested in, in referring recommending to the town council that this be referred to both concom and agcom yeah, and I don't know if it's appropriate to just if there's any way to reach out to members that were on the AGCOM while this was formed, because it, it was a pretty big deal and they went through a lot to do it. I mean, at least two people I could think of would be my husband and Jamie Wagner. But I mean, there, there would be minutes on, you know, who was there and who else was. Jamie might have even been chair at the time. And the thought of reaching out to them is that, that they would um, attend some of these meetings. But the I'm, I'm wondering about it because I, I know that we're saying that we want to make sure that we you know keep this really powerful. Um, I would also want the people who originally drafted it to make sure that it stays powerful. And you know there might be things in there that to someone else it might not seem important that they're in yeah. there, but the people who originally drafted it would know exactly why wow. certain things were in there. I just wanted to keep it powerful and I, I just don't know, I, I just think it would be good input. So that kind of language could be included in the report um, and you could help me with mm -hmm. a couple of sentences just to make sure that it, it says exactly what we wanted to say. Yep. But um, we as a committee, GOL, at this point, I don't think we have any further role other than to, um, you know, a one of exhortation and, uh, and so forth. So. Um, what I'm thinking, uh, Mandy, go ahead. Yeah, I think we could include in a motion to recommend that the town council refer this to AGCOM and also <laughs> that AGCOM and further recommend that AGCOM speak with the original drafters of the motion of the bylaw. Uh, the original, I'm sorry, the language original. Um, Proposers, drafters, drafters that's proponents. I, I don't know what, what the right word is, but let's try proponents on the bylaw. So, motion as it stands at the moment is to recommend the town council refer to AGCOM um, and further recommend that AGCOM speak with the original proponents of the bylaw. And um, when I write the final report, I would um, consult. Sarah, this is not in the motion, by the way. I, I believe put this somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. um, just a note to myself. I like uh, it though, George. I think they should yeah. all consult with me. <laughs> no, no well, it's, it's all right. We could put Sarah in here too if we want. Um, do we want to include any other body? Is it AgCom sufficient? This originally, uh, this didn't involve, this is just AgCom, right? Um, that's it, right? Yeah. And um, do we want to do we always include the town manager, refer to the town manager and AGCOM or not? Um, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, as long as it gets to AGCOM. Yeah. 
that's what matters. Um, I think so. so I think that's it. So refer to ADCOM and further recommend that ADCOM speak with the original proponents of the bylaw. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second, Schwartz. There are seconds. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'm going to go to a vote. Start with Sarah. Aye. Mandy. Aye. Darcy. Yes. Pat. Aye. And the chair is an aye. Again, the vote is unanimous, five zero. And then I will make a note to note to self. <laughs> Start with Sarah. All right. Can I interrupt for one second? Sorry. Please. Yep. So, um, George, did you make that motion, or Mandy, did you make it? I made the motion. Okay. Um, uh, at least that's my recollection, because I'm just making motions as I type them. So I made the motion, and it was seconded by Sarah. Okay, great. Thank you. And okay. Um, next one. Ryan said bylaw 3.49 was also Steinberg's assignment. Okay, he said that this should probably be on the agenda for next time with the actual language of the bylaw. Oh my God, okay. Um, poof. I think this is one we need to check with people to see what might need done or what the Board of License Commissioners has done and right. So I've had very brief, very, very brief conversations, a conversation um, with, um, so this is the, is this the rental registration bylaw, a part of it, or is this a separate, this is resident, residential rental property. Is this the registration bylaw or is this a separate bylaw? This is entitled short, so this is a separate bylaw, isn't it? I just don't know. I should know, but I don't. Um, so I guess, all right, who does this go to? Um, I think this one's a discuss at a later meeting. So we have to come back and, and so what do you want me? I mean, uh, I've already committed to a couple of things. What should I do to prepare us for this? We're going to need, I mean, Andy was supposed to reach out to Mora. I don't know that that happened. Um, I, I could talk to Andy, but I'm sure he's probably doesn't remember any of this either. Um, I'm talking to him later today. I could ask him about this and see if he has any recollection. But if we bring this back to GOL, um, what do you want from me? You want the bylaw itself. So basically review and clarify language that was done. I'm not sure, I guess it was done. Create a reference to section L, non-monetary penalties. As, so, um, and, and a plea to Mandy. Um, and then uh, I, I could look at this well, over yeah. the next couple of weeks and talk to Rob or reach out to him regarding just this in general. Okay. And then come back with some additional information, maybe. I'm just not sure we have enough information right now to even know what to do. But what you're suggesting is that this is something we still have work to do on and it has to come back to us. And yeah. so, and the question then is who's going to prepare this for us. And right now you're offering to do at least some of that. And you can also be communication with me. And if, if you need help or if I, I can help, I will help. So at the moment, so um, uh, Mandy will um, research, uh, and I use that word loosely, Mandy, I'm not asking you to do, but just research and, and speak with Maura. Thank you, Mandy. Um, and, and she will also reach out to me and, and I will help in any way I can. But so that's something coming back to us. Okay. So oh, could I just ask a question quickly? Please go ahead. The responsible person meaning of a group of people renting like unrelated re adults, who is the responsible person among them? Is that the definition we're looking at here? Um, I would think yes. And so your question is? Or just just that clarification. I'm just clarifying for myself yeah, right. what this what we're talking about here. I think that that's something that Mandy will help us with when we actually look at this for real and deal with it as a committee. I think that's what we're going to have to do. I don't think we can answer it right now. I think because um, the, the 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 text says that the committee also recommends consideration of the definition of responsible person, um, and then in the other column it says that it's been done. 
So I don't even, all right, I don't know how to square those. So hopefully Manny gets some clarity on that and um, we will discuss it as a committee. Zero energy. Um, so Ryan said bylaw 3.5 sent to Darcy for thoughts. Darcy said she had already consulted this bylaw with the, she already consulted on this with the zero energy task force. They didn't have a problem. She wanted to double check that they weren't other recommendations. And Ryan said he will find the red line document, <laughs> send it to Dumont, which he probably never did. Um, but I just, yeah. So yeah. Darcy, your thoughts. Um, well, with regard to the, just those couple of changes in the bylaw, they were the, they were not a problem for the zero energy task force. Okay. Um, okay. So, and I, I did double check with them. And again, they said there were no problem with them. Because in terms of the, this issue of just cl clarity of language, terminology, that was not, they, they had no problem with that. Yeah, they, they agreed with the changes that were suggested. Okay. So the committee recommends the town council consider that the defined term building and building addition is confusing because the terms building and building addition are both defined earlier and then modified by this later definition. So there does seem to be some confusion in the actual language. What you're saying, Darcy, is that I mean, is I it think they... the bylaw review committee fixed the confusion, didn't they? I think they did. Yes. Yeah. They. they there was. So why is this? Yeah, one... okay. okay. All right. I mean, so I, that... I think that it just didn't make it through the town council process. There were a few things that didn't make it through. So what we would be recommending, it sounds like, is that the council approve um, these changes. And yeah. then, then the question is having a document which shows what the changes are. Right, which, we, have, which is, we need to know what they are. Right, and, and that is back to the, the statement at the end here that the chair was going to send a red line document of bylaw 3.5. So um, I'm gonna highlight that. And um, uh, Darcy, if you, uh, if you have the ability to check and see whether you ever got it, you probably didn't, but if you did, that would be good to know. I will see what I can track down. But it sounds like in the report, we would be the motion would be that the council accept the changes. This is where I'm confused. Um, changes made by I, we and apparently we didn't vote on this when we voted the approval of the of the new bylaws or Did the uh, right. I mean, so what changes are we going to be voting on, and who made them? That's where I'm confused. We better find out. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is highlighted. Um, All right. I need to find the document. Darcy's understanding is that um, the Zero Energy Committee um, right, looked at this or looked at something and had no problems, but. Oh, may, may, <clears throat> maybe yeah. they were, uh, maybe they weren't fixed by the bylaw review committee. I, I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure. Well, the, I'm not see, sure. These things come to us or they came to us because they weren't able to get everything done or they, they left certain things um, that needed to be attended to. So my understanding of what this says is that there are some things that needed to be attended to that they didn't get to attend to. So if there is, if there are changes to this bylaw, other than, right, I don't even know who would have made them or did they make them and just get it, not get a chance to, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, all right, so I got- I don't know, but I know that I sent the, um, you know, red line version to the zero energy task force and, if you, could if you could track that down, if you have the ability yeah. to check your engines, and if you find that, um, send it to me, because um, I'm going to have to find that document. And probably the okay. first thing I do is email you and ask you if you have it. Right. Um, and then I'll start looking if you don't. Okay, so that's that. All right, personnel board, and also reach out to town manager for about three, he wants, uh, uh, and he will once again reach out to town manager and HR director. Um, 
Yeah, this sounds like something simply has to be, we, we recommend a referral to the town manager and to the personnel mm -hmm. review board at this point. And I could take, I'll take it up with Paul. I mean, it, I would, you know, at some point, assuming he's willing to meet with me on this, we would just go through a couple of these and see, um, maybe this is one where I should speak to him first before we do anything. Thoughts? That makes didn't sense. We, yeah, didn't we already in priority one say that? Because some uh, of these oh, is this, a, is this is this back? Oh, my, are we just how is why is this double noted? Okay, so back up because to there's different changes. I guess they uh, don't ask me. All right. Okay. So <laughs> this is, okay. But so so two point four and three point three in priority two, I think, are copies of whatever we decided earlier. So this too, share to reach out to Paul, right? So this is one of the, again, I will reach out to Paul and we aren't gonna take any action on this yet. Right. All right, so, um, sorry, don't make people dizzy. Um, so that's, let's see above. This sounds like the same thing, 3.3. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll just have a list and I will ask to meet with Paul and take him through it. And I don't know how soon that will happen, but. Um, um, then we have a number of items. Um, uh, these are things Lynn was gonna do. I don't know if she's ever had a chance to do it. I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't. Um, how are we doing on time? It's 12.08. Um, how are people feeling? Um, we could stop here. Um, we've made some headway. Um, we've got some things I need to do as chair. Um, do you wanna continue on? It's 12.08. We don't have any minutes. So um, the only thing that remains on our agenda is to talk about, uh, we have a FinCom resignation we need to talk about briefly. And um, we need to talk about how we're gonna proceed um, for the future agenda, which is right now largely this and zoning. So how are people feeling at this point, 1208? I would love to be able to end the meeting early. It would be okay. helpful. Yeah. I think we made some good headway here and uh, more than I thought we would. Um, so I'm willing to stop at this point with Lynn's assignments. And we'll come back to this at the next meeting. Um, and uh, turn to uh, the issue of the FinCom resignation, um, which you is- You know, I've been thinking about that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> On a couple of levels. One, part of the reason I didn't vote for Ms. Schiffler was because of the new children. And I thought it would impact, but we're we're not really allowed to ask those kinds of questions. So it was kind of sad when what I was concerned about came true because I think she's been a good member. Yeah. I'm wondering if we can't go to this committee's second choice. And man, I don't even know if I remember the person's name, so maybe that's a silly thing to do. But that, what was his name? Um, I believe you're thinking of, um, uh, he was a, uh, he works actually in the schools, uh, but not in our community. I think that's who you're thinking of. Right, yeah, um, and I'd have to go back and but, look at. Uh, this is a good question that just, when you have resignations, that, you know, what then, what happened? We don't have any rules governing this. It's, it's pretty, and maybe that's okay. Maybe that's fine, but here's an example. Um, it, it would seem that we would always have, no matter what happens, we would always have to post and we'd always have to, I mean, we just can't go to some I think the second choice, the, right? That just yeah, can't, we I can't know. do that. So we, the question I guess I wanted to raise with all of you, I have a conversation later today with Andy as chair of finance, which, uh, which it seems appropriate just to see where the committee's at. Um, but, um, the question for you is whether we want to proceed to fill that position. 
And the larger question is who actually gets to make that decision? Is it made by, the, by us? Because we're the recommending committee. Is it made by the chair of finance? Is it made by the president of the council? Is it made it by the council? It seems to me itself? that it should come. It I mean, seems to me that yeah. the chair of the finance committee, but the committee is required to have three resident members, and resident members are critical beings on that committee. Um, so I, I definitely want the person replaced. And if we have to go, you know, and we probably do need to go through the full posting process. I see Sarah nodding and I, she's yeah. right, you know. Um, it's a council decision knows, to go. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a chair's position. That's not appropriate. I don't think. Oh, okay. All right. So the council. Yeah. But I think the position definitely needs to be filled. So I'm just looking for a moment at um, the language that we have spent an enormous amount of time crafting here, um, this under vacancy. The, this is the only language that I know that exists that would even ap ap apply to this other than us just winging it as we're doing it right now. So it defines, and we haven't adopted this, so it, this is not any official yeah. language either, but uh, assuming that we do adopt it or get something like this gets adopted, um, it tells us when a vacancy occurs. Um, Read it, George. Well, when a vacancy or impending vacancy occurs on a multiple member body appointed by the town council, the chair of the council committee responsible for recommending appointments to the council for that body or designee after consulting with the committee shall submit to the clerk of the town council for publication a vacancy notice. So the language pretty much says that, you know, when this happens, no matter when it happens, um, after consulting with the committee, um, you post a vacancy notice and off you go. But what if the committee says, we don't wanna fill that position right now for whatever reason, or they say, let's wait a month, what do we do? I don't think it's appropriate to, to let the committee, I think Mandy Jo has definitely has an idea on this because I see it, <laughs> but I don't, I, I think that those are our rules. I don't, I don't think it's appropriate to let a chair or committee decide that, but right. I, and you know Mandy Jo has something to say. Yeah, so um, I think if there's a vacancy, the process starts to fill the vacancy and the consulting that we were drafting into whatever language was, I think was um, to, see if there were any changes to the notice that the committee may want, not should the notice be posted. Right. Um, I think it was, hey, here's what I intend to post, should I? <laughs> you know, do you want any changes to it or did I include everything, things like that. Um, you know, I've, I've never considered it. There, there's a, I've been notified there's formally a vacancy on the associate members of the ZBA and I've never considered it not something we wouldn't advertise for, you know, and that you'd choose not to advertise for. Um, so I would, so, I, yeah. the, I, would, I would recommend putting the advertisement out. Let me just for the sake of argument, imagine it's like a month, right? From the time the position is going to, would have been uh, ended anyway. Um, you know, is there any flexibility here, any ability to, to use judgment? Or is it even if it's like in two weeks or three weeks? Or whatever? I know somebody, for whatever reason, has to resign, you know, uh, and, it, and the term ends in three weeks. Well, then they would be replaced anyway, or the search would happen. So I don't see the problem. But we, we wouldn't automatically um, just immediately post the notice. We would wait. Um, until, you know, we might wait a week or two or two weeks or three weeks at the moment, whatever we would, you know, but in this case, for instance, um, it does seem that there's no question. Um, a vacancy occurs. Um, we consult with the committee to make sure that the language is at, you know, appropriate. And the language, by the way, in the current document that we're going to present to the council on, uh, on Monday coming up is vague. It, you know, it, it, so we might have to make a change or we might just leave it vague. But right now, all it says is after consulting with the committee. So it doesn't, you know, I think Mandy's right. That's probably what we intended. 
um, but it doesn't say that. It just, it sounds like it could be read that we go to the committee and say, do you want to fill this or not? It, it, you know, what Mandy's saying is no, we go to the committee or, and really what we mean is the chair. And we say, you know, we're going to post this notice. Is there any change to the language that that's, you know, appropriate? Because uh, otherwise it's going up, you know, in the next day or two. Um, Sarah's got her hand up. Sarah, please. You're muted. Okay. Um, I just think that the the other discussions we've had about um, a chair of a committee and and how much um, influence they have and also a committee's influence, I just I feel like it should just go out. I don't know that we want to give a committee that kind of power. I just. And I know what you're saying about, well, what about just in common sense, but I feel like we have rules for a reason, but that's just my, that's just what I think. What I'm hearing is clearly a sense from the committee that there's no question. I mean, I'm having a conversation with the chair of finance later today uh, um, for a number of things we're gonna talk about, but one of them, the principal one is to consult with him on this vacancy. And, um, you know, what I'm hearing from my colleagues is that th I'm not consulting him to get his uh, opinion on whether we should proceed or not, because he doesn't have a say on that. Sure. What I'm consulting him about is whether there's any um, need to alter or change the language of the, of the uh, vacancy uh, notice. That's what I'm hearing. And, um, and that's the understanding, it seems, of this committee for, I have the language up on the screen of um, mm -hmm. what, what we have voted on and are proposing to the council to govern exactly what we're doing right now. And the language strikes me as maybe a little vague. Um, and I'm not sure we want to, I, we don't want to tinker with it today. Um, if we tinker with it, it would have to be at the council meeting. And I'm not sure we want to do that, but I think you would all agree that the way it's written would seem to suggest that when a vacancy occurs, the recommending committee chair or the designee starts the process and they consult with the committee. But it doesn't say what they're consulting with the yeah. committee about. It doesn't um, say that, but it says shall submit the bulletin board vacancy notice. So okay, all right. So that you know, would seem if right. If you read on, it says shall submit. So okay. it's not on whether okay. you have to right. submit it. It's on something else. Good. So it's it's vague, but the point is that that it's it's not about yay or nay. Um, right. Good. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, the other thing that a, a chair can do is say what the needs of the committee are, and that might affect the language of the advertisement. But right. Right. No. Exactly. I think this is also a good example of why we need this document. Because right now, there is no official language on this at all. Andy may very well think that he has veto power. And there's nothing that says he doesn't. Maybe Lynn thinks that she gets to decide. There's nothing that says that she doesn't. Until we adopt language like this for the council as a whole, it's the Wild West. Correct. She just like Texas. Right. Yahoo. But I mean, that's my understanding. Now, I will make the case as strongly as I can that this is our decision and we're going to go ahead and do it. But uh, at the moment, there's nothing official that backs that up. That's my understanding. So another reason why I think what we struggled with for many months is actually worthwhile. I would argue the thing that backs that up is the fact of our charge is to recommend to the council, make recommendations to the council on appointments to the finance committee. Right. Then members of the finance committee. Well, there's a vacancy. So right. we can, without anyone telling us, make a recommendation to fill it. Right. Right. Per the charge. Sure. Right. But it seems it's perfectly possible under the current lack of clear. Uh, guidance that this committee could say, you know, we just don't want to fill it right now. We're going to wait. Now, we're not going to do that, I understand, but it, there's nothing that forbids us from saying, you know, we'll wait. We'll wait. I mean, you know, whereas this document seems to say you need to do it. 
I think the document is important and the saying saying that we need to do it because there's too much manipulation that could happen if a committee can say, oh, well, I don't feel like filling this now because the six people I want to have apply are all on vacation uh, or whatever, you know, making it, you know, I, I think it, you know, I, I, I think yeah, we can move forward with this sense. Right. We, we looked at this and we said this was an important issue. We're making a recommendation on Monday and I think we need to act as if it's in place. If, if if the chair of finance committee wants to say, well, not until there's a vote, that's fine. But I think we need to. Okay. Um, good. So that is it for what, I mean, I had future agenda items was the question of do we meet again next week? And that was partly related to um, the zoning bylaw issue. And I think we resolve that. We can wait till the 22nd. And the other had to do um, with these bylaws for future review. And thanks to all of you today. We've actually made some progress there. And uh, so that's that. You can spend a time on it on the 22nd if you'd like. I, I'm sure I will. Um, I'm sure I we will. I won't be here. I know. <laughs> um, do we have Sorry. any? I just want to see if we have any public present. I don't think we do. No, we don't. Okay. And so um, then I'm ready to declare this meeting adjourned. And clear, again, consistent, and actionable. Thank you all for your hard work today and uh, enjoy the rest of today. Thank you, everyone. Right. Bye, bye bye. Bye, Emily. Bye bye. Thank you, Emily. Bye.